Hello and welcome to another episode of Meet the Streamer. And today we have the pleasure of talking to Lord Zaf, um, who is a community contributor on the NA server. How are you doing? Oh, fine. Thanks. Uh, do, uh, I never asked, do, do I call you Pete or P Slack or uh, just call Slack? me Pete? Just, d just, call you Pete. just call me Pete or Peter. It doesn't really matter too much. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm doing and great, Pete. How are you doing? Not too bad because it's like 8 a.m. where you are at the moment. So hopefully you, you, you got your hopefully you've woken up. So I appreciate you doing this. <laughs> no so problem. so Lord Zath, how, where did you come by your name then? Oh, that's a that's a long and rich history. Um, I'm a <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Babylon Five. It's a science fiction uh, television show okay. from the 1990s. And uh, when I was a teenager growing up in in high school, uh, my handle was Jakar seventeen oh one because I was also a Star Trek fan. Um, but I found over the over the course of the show that I enjoyed Zathras much more, and I saw more of myself in Zathras uh, than Jakar. So I changed my name to Zathras seventeen oh one. Played a lot of a game called X Wing versus Tie Fighter. Oh yeah, and, that's good. That was a good game. And everybody started just calling me Zath instead of Zathras. So I just said, "Well, why don't we just call myself Zath?" And I threw myself, uh, you know, Lord in front because I was playing Tie Fighter and I loved playing the Tie Interceptor. So I figured I was on the side of the Sith. So <laughs> Lord Zath. Fantastic. So with this like sci-fi background, like I know you play um, a few of the um, other games like Homeworld on your YouTube channel. So how did you get into warships? Because, you know, one's, his one's historical base, the other obviously clearly sci-fi. Well, yeah, the thing that got me into to warships um, is actually a video game, but might believe it or not, from Super Nintendo. And I covered it recently on my channel uh, about six months ago. It's called Pacific Theater of Operations, or just PTO. It's made by Koei Games, K-O-E-I. And uh, these guys, it, it basically you simulate uh, the Japanese or the American navies in World War II. And it's a whole big what-if situation, right? You can... You can attack Pearl Harbor if you want to, if you're the Japanese. Uh, you can, you know, uh, go on an island hopping campaign if you're the United States. I mean, you can you can repeat history or you can make your own. Um, and I had a lot of fun doing that with PTO2, especially. We basically um, fought against the U.S. government who refused to give us any funding because they felt like the uh, war didn't exist or some something like that. So... Basically, I, I fought the war on a shoestring budget, finally got sick of it, and decided to YOLO Tokyo. And that was kind of fun. <laughs> we just went all in. Boom. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, great fun. Um, I must say, I never had the Sega one, but I did used to play a lot of the uh, uh, the old um, the, the PC games, which uh, from Microprose days um, for uh, naval combat, and there were some crackers in that. Um, so where do we find you? What's, what are your stream times when you're up and running? So I uh, typically run 12 to 6 p.m. Central Standard. So it's currently 8.45 a.m. here. So that's, what, a six-hour jump mm -hmm. for you, yep. right? Yeah. So your time would be, uh, would be 6 o'clock p.m. or 1,800 hours. And then I finish at uh, 6 o'clock, so I would finish at uh, midnight your time, right? Yeah, that'd be about right. Yeah. And that's yeah. every day? Is it every day? Oh, no. Uh, I do have a, I have a job, so <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> uh, I can't stream every day. Plus, plus my wife would kill me. Um, yeah, that's I, true. I, I stream on uh, Sundays only. However, uh, school just let out uh, two days ago, so I'm hoping to start streaming over the summer. And my summer hours would most likely be... Around the same times, I'm thinking like Tuesdays and Thursdays, that gives me some time off stream as well to like, you know, rest. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I think sometimes people forget that uh, streamers often have a second job or have real jobs or, you know, s part time jobs, depending on how much it brings in obviously um mm. i think people i think people do forget about that and they they seem to don't think that you need a break as well as everybody else does well what a lot of people don't realize is there's uh, almost as much work that goes into creating a stream that mm. it, than actually streaming itself so 
Uh, for example, on my Sunday stream, when it's over, I spend the next hour or so chopping up that stream into smaller bits to then publish as separate videos on my Twitch VODs, but also to export over to YouTube. And then I have to go and edit out each of those different YouTube videos. I have to put uh, special cover pictures for all of them. I have to figure out when I'm going to release them and then post uh, post a link onto uh, Twitter and set that up, schedule that ahead. So for a six hour stream, it takes me about six to seven, maybe even eight hours to do all that post stream. Mm. I think so that's people... why I'm a little scared about streaming more in the summer. <laughs> Um, so when you actually started up, which I believe was back in 2016, um, what mm. were you what, what were your worries and concerns about starting up? Or was it more of like, oh, this is I've this is a hobby I think I could get into, or what? What made you hit that go button? What made me hit that go button is this program right here. I wanted to be a part of the CC program. Okay. And at the time, Nico Power uh, was the community manager, and I met him at uh, you know um, the Let's Battle Tour, at the Lexington Let's Battle Tour. And I just said to him, I said, you know, you've got a lot of, of really awesome CCs, and I want to be one of them. And how do, how do I become a CC? And he said, well, you obviously need to have some sort of recognition. People need to know who you are. They need to respect who you are. Um, and you know, we, we need to notice you as, as war gaming as well. Um, and I've long had a relationship with them as an individual player, but not as a community figure, right? Not as somebody who like is out there in public and everybody knows who I am. I mean, people know me from just running into me in games and stuff, but that's about it. So I said, okay, well, I, I'm going to, I'm going to put something together. And at first I started on YouTube and uh, right around, right, right before that was, uh, the STW Sun Tzu Warrior is a clan. They had their second anniversary celebration tournament thing. And they asked me to, to kind of help run it and organize it. And so one of the components that we put in there was that the, the winner of whichever, like, I think it was damage based. I can't remember exactly, but the winner of that would send me their replay file. I would record that replay file. We would put that out on YouTube. And it was a way to celebrate this person for winning, right? Having the, the, yeah. the achievements of this player, but also a learning opportunity for anybody who might have that ship to look at it. And here's, here's what somebody did with it that, that's really awesome. And uh -huh. um, like, I distinctly remember covering a Molotov replay. Uh, so like, that was a hell of a lot of fun. And I said, you know, I could, I could definitely do this. And maybe this becomes what, what my channel is all about. So we, somebody had joked that we, but we were calling my channel the replay theater and i'm like well you know what let's let's keep it that way <laughs> that's our name boom so that's uh that's how zeth zeth's replay theater came to be and uh, yes uh, and you can people can submit and how can people submit replays to you so there's two different ways that they can send replays to me actually three really uh the easiest is on my discord um mm -hmm. my my discord channel uh has access to uh, a specific channel within for people to send uh, replays. Um, so that's the easiest way to send them. Uh, another way is through email. My email is lordzathna, all one word, at gmail.com. So that's another opportunity. Um, and then the third is if they send me a, a direct message on the forums, um, although that's... That's a little bit more difficult uh, to follow up on, especially like if I'm at work or something, because I can't download uh, that thing. So I just sent you the the link for my Discord. Yeah, we'll put all all links will be in the description below, and if I remember, right. they'll be popping up that side. I think it is on the on the <laughs> video, because <laughs> obviously it's mirrored image. So you want to point that way, and you want to point that way, and no right. matter. Oh. <laughs> It's I do that so many times. I'm like, is, is that? Oh, that's that way. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's that one, isn't it? It's, it's that way, isn't it? Um, so it, it was definitely, uh, it was a conscious decision to, you know what? I want to be a CC. I want to go for it because, uh, because the joy of the get, the joy of the game that is World of Warships. Uh, do you think you're in the oh, minority yeah. of that one? Do you think it? Oh, do you think people do actually strive to become a CC in that sense? I think a lot of people don't quite understand what the CC program is. And uh, like me, back when I wanted to become a CC, I, I, 
to to me there there were you know in my eyes it was you know free stuff like that that's what that's what you know like made me think i want to be a cc right like you know i want people to like when we were at uh at that uh event at let's battle tour uh regular players would have a black t-shirt gee i should have worn it but uh, it's in the closet over there um i you know regular players would have a black t-shirt wargaming play, uh, employees had a red t-shirt and community contributors had blue and like i thought that would be really cool i really wish i had that blue shirt <laughs> so i'm gonna get me that blue shirt damn it you know <laughs> like and I, I still don't have it by the way but anyway um I, I, yeah <laughs> well, Gammy, if you're listening send the blue shirts <laughs> <laughs> otherwise we're going to wish.com all right <laughs> there you go uh, i've got uh, so many other shirts so i don't i don't mind at this point <laughs> so starting out what did you start out with was it just a, a box standard webcam and microphone or you know did you invest quite heavily into your starting equipment so you know, um, one of the things about um, my my life and my, uh, especially my marriage with my with my wife is that we go over all finances. We discuss when we're we're talking about purchasing things. So when I said, "Hey, I want to start doing this, and I I want to get a really nice camera," and I really, you know, uh, there no, <laughs> the answer the answer was no. You're you're not going to do this because you're not making any money. So no, you're not going to do that at all. So I started off with uh, just just the microphone in the headset. And if you go back to my first replays that I covered on my channel, I sound like crap. I sound incredibly tinny because it's just a cheap, uh, it's, it, it, they were Razer Kraken headphones that I won from iChase Gaming, who is a CC. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and yeah, so I had that plugged in and that, that's how I was recording myself. And people were like, you need to get a better mic. And I'm like, all right. So I did a look on, on YouTube and I'm still using that or on Amazon. I'm still using that same mic right now to talk to you. It was $20. I, I got that approved, <laughs> but, but a blue Yeti, it was, no, <laughs> you know? Um, and then, uh, I, I actually, uh, I had a couple of webcams, um, that I had borrowed from school. Thanks to the, uh, Thanks to the uh, pandemic, unfortunately, you know, we were we were all stuck at home and I needed a webcam for school purposes so that I could, you know, connect with the students and do video conferencing. So um, I, I use that as double, you know, for double duty. And then I'm like, I need to get a better camera. So, again, I wanted something that nice. No, <laughs> so I had to go and look for uh, a, a nice webcam. And I had nothing but problems with with one of the two of them. One of them is, is now my cat's cam, actually, believe it or not. So it's currently focused on on Stevie down there and he's he's happily resting on the t-shirt one of the t-shirts I got from War Gaming um and now we finally after I proved that you know gave her proof of concept hey I, I do make a little bit of money uh streaming now we've got ourselves a, a nice uh, Elgato cam link and that's connected to of all things my travel camera because I'm not traveling anymore so what the hell let's just put it up here but you sound really good um through here well, I mean you. it's a lot it certainly doesn't tell you doesn't tell that you're using a 20 power microphone um so do you use any post processing to to help it out no i don't and as a matter of fact i just forgot i actually had another microphone for a while courtesy of one of my viewers very awesome dude um and unfortunately that microphone crapped out it was a condenser so you had it real close to your mouth mm -hmm. um but but it started making real loud noises so we had to stop stop doing that on the stream and go back to my 20 dollar uh, but no, I don't really do a lot of post-processing. Um, I just, to me, I like to shoot things raw. I like to shoot it as it is mm. and send it off. I, I don't want any special channel trailer. I don't want any special, like, outro, fade in, fade out. Like, first of all, I don't have time for that. So, I mean, if I, <laughs> Sundays, for those of you guys watching and, and under, see, understand, we talked about the post-process of, of clipping the streams. I had 17 clips from sunday stream from a six hour stream that was chopped up into 17 bits i do not have the time to go into a video editor program and attach detach clean up whatever 17 of those things and then post them out in preparation for a tuesday release and three or four releases every day since that, that, yeah. that just it just doesn't work <laughs> Yeah, I so. mean, I, 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 I'm totally with you there. I'm much, if the camera can do it, I'd let it do it. I mean, I'm so 
because like you got family and my wife um i have to and it's, and i i she supports me wholeheartedly in doing these things mm-hmm. but it is to the budget to the time frame that we can get to do it because we've got a two-year-old and i think it sounds very similar oh, wow. to yourself um to to you know you you know right yeah this is yes you're keen on computers yes you're keen on photography but the money you need to put your own money into it and you know a budget together to to make it work and yeah like you i built up over time all the different things i mean all the different parts of this streaming setup but yeah like you also the minimum if i could get away with the least amount of editing afterwards thank you very much Mm because that's just takes so much longer to do um and right and that that's we'll talk a little bit later um in a minute when we go into it but yeah i think that the the importance of the support from the family is quite huge for doing this one i think oh absolutely and you know don't get me wrong if my wife came to me and said hey i want to spend five thousand dollars and you know rebuild my wardrobe or do xyz i might say hold on a second let's tap the brakes on this you know <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> what do so, i get out of it yeah exactly totally right. agree and things right. take priorities like the, the house decorating or the car needs to be fixed first etc so yeah i totally get that yep. so um i think that's a good pause there um so we will run the clip of the intro of your trailer and we'll come back and have a bit of discussion about the actual stream itself See you in a bit, folks. Well, hello there. Uh, I'm Lord Zath, the North American community contributor for World of Warships. Uh, on this Twitch channel, you'll find live streams pertaining to the current state of World of Warships, World of Warships gameplay, and some replay analysis like the game that you see behind you right here. Uh, of course, we also take a look at other video games as well. Feel free to stick around, toss a follow, kick up your feet, pour yourself some dirty water, watch, and learn. If you'd like some more specific assistance, feel free to join my Patreon. Thanks, and I'll see you on the high seas. So we've just seen the um, intro, so thank you very much for sending that to me. And we've already previously talked about your the primary core of your... Ch- what do you think would be your primary core of your channel? You say Zath... We mentioned about your Zath Replay Theatre. Would that be your basis for the starting point if we came to your channel? Oh, absolutely. So the core of my channel is replay analysis. It's taking a look at what people have sent in and giving them feedback on their game. Um, One of the coolest experiences I had was somebody ran into me at Anchors Away Anaheim uh, two two years ago now, three years. I don't know. But um, we were talking for a second and he said, you know, I sent you the best game I ever had and I thought I did everything right. And you found like a hundred things that I could have done differently just watching and He's like, and that opened up this whole new world to me of, wow, I really don't know this game that well, but like, I want to learn it, right? I want to go more into it and figure this out. Um, So that was like the coolest thing that I could hear, right? Because, you know, when when I go through and look at replays, I'm not, I'm not there to tear somebody down or make fun of them for Mm -hmm. the decisions that they make or the way that they play. I'm there to say, hey, did you consider trying that? Or I, I don't know that I like your decision to go up the channel on two brothers. Um, but, you know, if you're going to do that, maybe try doing it in a different way. Try putting yourself on this rock instead of where you were. Or, you know, like little things like that that we don't think is that big of a deal in the moment. But as we all know, it's those little things that cascade into all these d- bigger problems, you know, later on down the line. Mm. So. That's where I enjoy this. Every replay is something new. It's fresh because every player is different and I don't know what I'm going to see. So it's kind of exciting for me to watch along with my viewers as we unpack that uh, that game uh, together. Uh, so do you blind taste the replays or do you pre-watch them before you put them up online to get a flavor? I do not. I actually ask people when they send me a replay, do not tell, do not send me the end screens because I know a lot of other YouTubers will put the end screens up there so you can see how much damage they got, uh, where they yeah. were in relation yeah. to the team. I don't want to see that. I don't want to know what achievements the person's going to get. I don't want to know if it's a win or a loss. Uh, to be honest, the, the best the best replays are the losses. Um, and the best replays are the the regular replays where nothing much is going on because that allows us to take a look at at uh, what what the player is doing right, what the player is doing wrong. Um, I love replays where we have like five minutes of like no shooting, 
because that gives me a chance to talk about the person's positioning, the decisions that led up to that five minutes of silence. And we as an entire group, as a stream, are experiencing that silence together and thinking to ourselves, where would we like to be right about now, right? So mm -hmm. though, those are really handy. Uh, of course, people will will send me, you know, their their EP game, right? You know, here's here's the best game I've, I've ever done. I've, I did 250,000 damage, blah, 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 you know. Okay, um, I've had somebody send me. Uh, this is this is the, uh, the the server damage record on NA for this particular ship and all that. I'm like, cool. Like, okay, well, well, let's go over it. But I'm not, you know, I'm not here to to worship you and say, look at this. Oh my God, you know, it's it's what were the what were the factors that brought you here? You know, because typically the factors that that lead up to it, one of those epic games. Uh, the the player is a big part of that, but the team is also a big part of that too. In order to have that epic game, you have to have the right balance of teammates that that, that just go and get themselves killed for whatever reason, uh, and a, and an enemy team that is happily killing your teammates, but not enough of them to where it's going to be a loss mm. or or the game ends quickly enough, right? So, mm. you know, it's it's kind of fun to look at all that. I mean, I find sometimes when I watch you know, these epic replays, something has had to go wrong to yes. to enable you to dig it out to get the high damage totals, I find, um, uh, rather than, you know, the bread and butter games, which, you know, could I fired here? Could I have not fired here? So it's interesting that you, it's almost like blind. You say, right, okay, we're just going to fire this game up and see what happens. Um, do you see yourself more as a coach or a viewer? Uh, originally, I saw myself as a viewer. We were going to view this together. Uh, I see myself far more as a coach now. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, I've I've coached, you could say, uh, a number of players, and it's great because these are people that you know supported my channel originally uh, when I first created it, and have have been there ever since. And so I've seen a lot of their replays, and it's great, like watching them improve over time. Um, mm. You know, like, I remember helping a player uh, it, who played in Iowa, and he sent me this Iowa replay and was really frustrated because, you know, the team died right before him, all that kind of stuff, and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we talked about power projection. We talked about his positioning being too far back, about a maybe a grid square or two back, right? Um, but we talked about those kinds of things. And over the course of, I would say, a year of sending in replays, now that player you could tell is much more confident in and how he's playing in that ship right or mm. any ship in general uh same thing with another person who's now in uh, in our uh, in our sub clan crack and blow um with the des moines and um watching him improve has, has been really uh, fun too so like to me that that's where the joy comes out of this channel is is helping people out um and i've actually enjoyed it so much that I've actually created a uh, a Patreon where people can uh, join in and um, you know different tiers get different benefits and I'll actually do replay analysis off stream with people on my Patreon. We call it my only replays because um, you know they're, they're not going to have an OnlyFans, but um, <laughs> you know the idea is that we we put that together and uh, they they can join my only replays and I'll sit down with them off stream so I'm not looking at chat there's no other music that's being played or anything else that I'm focused on I'm focused on that player and what they're doing and that's been so fun to get kind of get back to my roots right so like the good old days of before I streamed and before I was you know discovered so to speak and before I was a CC and all that like just just to to do those one on one things it's great fantastic i uh yeah it's interesting that uh, sometimes you do i'm an archery coach and part of the joy of uh coaching is watching someone develop and it could be as easy as somebody coming up to you saying oh i've i've got a gold or i've got my best best result today or even you know oh, by the way can you just come and have a look at me please i, I think i'm doing something wrong and it, it's 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 definitely a unique feeling it's definitely unique you can't really replace it um in that so Moving on a little bit then, so you do have a YouTube channel where you do other things. We've met um, other videos, mm -hmm. we've done Homeworld and you've um, also recently done a review of your old, um, the game that got you into Warships. So how, 
how has it been trying to link the two together? How do you link the two together with the Twitch and the YouTube? Uh, well, mainly most of most of what I do on Twitch then uh, you know cuts over to YouTube, um, and that that's really the the majority of that link between the two. Um, if people send in, you know, it, going back to like that only replay stuff, if somebody does a you know Patreon thing with me, that's off stream. I'll put that directly on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. You know, other other games that that I can look at. Um, when I went down to one day a week, uh, it's really hard with only six hours. It's really hard to just say, okay, well, we're going to go play a different game for an hour or something, right? If I'm streaming every day, that that's a different situation, right? If I'm if I'm doing uh, Tuesday and Thursday as well, maybe maybe an hour in that I, I can then afford to go and say, let's go check out this other game that I got my hands on or let's play a game that I, I really enjoy. Um, the other thing is when I'm like doing usually those those games like Homeworld you were talking about, those are done uh, on Fridays and, you know, um, I'm I'm working. And when I get off of work, I'm able to record pretty quick because on, on Fridays this year, at least, I, I'm working from home. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe that's changing for next year. So I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work next year for trying to fit in a, a recording after school by the time I get home. But the whole idea is it's a lot quicker and easier to just put something together and start recording than it is to build up the, the stream and to put a numbers up there. And I, I find that like with games like Homeworld, that are very story based, that are very focus based. Like there's, if I were to play Homeworld on stream, I would have to completely ignore chat, and yeah. I'd have to completely ignore any of the any of the pop ups that come up from my overlays, from subs or bits or subscription or, or follows. Like I'd have to ignore all that because I need to like make sure my units aren't dying. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, so like it, it, to me doing it doing it on uh, on youtube like that makes the experience that much more intimate like we're we're just more focused on the game uh we're more focused on the story we're more focused on on the you know on how uh, it's how it's all coming together for those gather games um cuz you also still have a community with you don't you 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 play play with a number of other people I, from when i yes. watch them for do the research it's not just you playing the game it's you with a group of friends playing the game watching you play so it's sort yep. of like a mini stream in itself yes uh and the way i do it actually is i'll post on my discord hey i'm recording today three o'clock p.m central come join me if you want and then uh you know i'll be in um i'll just be in my general voice channel and i'll be i'll be uh streaming the game while i'm recording to on obs so basically people they, they don't see me um on the screen but they see the game mm. and so they're right there with me as as we're discovering a new ship uh in homeworld or you know as we're as we're yoloing tokyo in uh pto too you know like uh, they're right with me and, and we're telling the story together and i think that's what's kind of fun about it is it's not just me talking through the game or playing the game by myself it's no you know i've, I've got others that are hanging out that you know we're joking we're having a good time you know we're we're just chill and relaxed. That that's the whole point of playing video games, right? Yeah, very true. I it's a very unique <laughs> way of seeing it. It's the first time I've seen it done I've seen it done through YouTube like that, I must admit. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Um uh we also pretty see well, obviously we mentioned you're a CEC, so and also you've recently covered the King of the Sea. So you did you mm -hmm. take your analysis skills that you've developed um and bring it to the table for the King of the Sea tournament. And how did you get involved with that? Oh uh, boy. So King of the Sea is an interesting rabbit hole. Um you I've been playing this game for six years basically, since uh just after closed alpha, right before closed beta test. Mm -hmm. Um it's a passion of mine. I play every day. Um I get my dailies done every day, no matter how many games it takes. It took twenty four <sighs> yesterday to get my Ouch. dailies done. That was a painful session. Very painful day. <laughs> Very painful day. Lot lots of losses there, but um it is what it is. I, I still got it done. Um, and I used to play a lot of competitive events. Um, before King of the Sea, there was a thing on NA called Supremacy League. And this was something that was similar to King of the Sea. It was player run and organized. And that was, if, you, if you've ever done bowling and you're familiar with league play in bowling, 
Supremacy League was exactly like that. You had you had weekly games, and then after like a month of that or two, then you had your playoffs and your finals and all that kind of stuff. And the prizes were all crowdfunded, crowdsourced prizing, and so you know it was some doubloons here and there, whatever else. But like it was it was a lot of work. We we did all the practices, and of course you know we had those those matches and stuff and. Since I was somewhat decent in carrier, I got to be the CV, you know, person. All the time. <laughs> all the time, which was so draining um, because, you you know, it's like RTS. You got to, you got and it's it's all micromanaging your planes. And if you stray into an anti-air bubble, you lose like three of them. So you have to like watch out for them because even people in Benson's had anti-air build Benson's because of how important carrier spotting was. So, oh my God. But, um, so... I've I've used a lot of that experience to help me when it comes to King of the Sea. And also, of course, just playing the game, being a Unicom, and all my replay analysis. All of that absolutely comes into play. You were talking earlier about being an archery coach. I'm sure you could watch somebody who's who's shooting a bow and arrow and immediately watching them, you know where the arrow is going to fly. It doesn't yeah. matter necessarily what angle you're at to that person. You're just looking at their stance. You're looking at how they're holding. You're looking at the amount of, of power, essentially, they're pulling back on the bow. Mm. And you you already know if you've got someone who's going to be a consistently hitting the same spot on the target or if they're going to be way off and all over the place. Yeah. And the same is, is the case for King of the Sea. As you're watching the ships move up and, and do positioning, you already know, at least you can you can predict what's going to happen you know, in the future. And so the the fun about that is when I've got viewers that are watching me trying to get the camera over to that prediction area, right, to see what's happening, um, which, of course, sometimes means we don't catch the entire battle. We don't catch what's happening on the other flank because these maps are ginormous. But at least we get to see some of the action. We get to see some of the drama that's playing out. And I think that's one of the hardest parts of King of the Sea is you are you're a player you're a commentator, you're a cameraman, and you're a producer all in one. Yeah, you're doing a lot. That's of a lot of work. <laughs> and also, you're not just doing it for yourself. You're working with another CC or another person on the presenting and handing back to the studio like you would do with a football game or a rugby right. game, whatever. Well, yes, but we're we're we are the studio. Like when when we when we go back, like I mean, the, the finals broadcast. Yeah, you've got your your four guys there that are doing that, but. But everybody else that's not in in the you know the main world of warships, mm. we are the studio. So when we hand it back to the studio, we're handing it back to ourselves, <laughs> talking about what happened in that game. And all, so the point I'm making is we're never off. You know no. what I mean? Like we're on that whole time, and we're on a five minute delay. So if something goes wrong on my stream, which you were talking about earlier, catching some of my, uh, we're trying to troubleshoot, but we're trying to troubleshoot five minutes in the future. So when chat's like, Seth, your audio doesn't sound right or something like that, guys, I see that. Thank you. But you got to wait four and a half minutes for the fix to come into play. I'm so sorry. Yeah. You, you know, it's <laughs> so like, it's, it's, it's a lot of stress. It's a lot of work, um, but it's, it's really worth it. It's a lot of fun to do King of the Sea. And, um, you know, I, I, I get a lot of, I got a lot of positive feedback from it. Um, I tried something new for the first time, uh, this, this season of King of the Sea. Um, and I developed an instant replay system. So when I hit the button, it'll pop up in the top right quarter of the stream. What just happened the past 45 seconds. So if there was an epic hit or something like that, or somebody just got one shot wow. from across the map, I'll push that instant replay button. It'll pop up in the corner. And then we can see that again while we're also still covering what happened live, you know. Lord. So it's a lot of work, that. a lot of work. It's quite incredible yes. you managed to do it, though. It's, it's And this year there was a, I think it was this year, the first time I had a proper prize pool for it as well. Proper money yeah. was in it. Proper money in front. Yes. Cool. All right, then. I think that, that really does wrap up that section. We if mm, enjoy it. it. So we're now talking about the future. You've been, you know, we talked about you being in part of the CC program for quite quite some difficult time since its inception um i take it do you think what do you do you feel you'll be keep along with that because that is your major core of your you know your your channel as it were uh yeah i don't see a reason to stop um the the c so 
you know, I think a lot of people don't realize uh, a CC is a relationship, right? CC program is a relationship between players and wargaming, just like, uh, you know, any of the other volunteer programs for players. And, um, you know, I've, I've done my best to maintain a positive, strong relationship with wargaming. And I did that before I was a CC, but, um, yeah, I, I, I don't see myself leaving that program anytime soon. Um, I really do enjoy getting a chance to meet others from around the world who, uh, like me are very passionate about this game. And, mm. um, I've learned so much, um, I wouldn't be here today in front of you if it wasn't for the CC program. And I know this sounds, this might sound silly, but I told you I wanted to to get into the CC program. Um, at one point, uh, they they posted, okay, here are the rules, the requirements to maintain to to stay a part of the CC wow. program. Uh yeah, and so you know, at that point, I was I was streaming on Twitch, but you know, I I maybe had like. 20 30 people watching when i did it right i was posting to youtube but i didn't have that many people checking it out and then they posted the the, the limit the lower bound was 35 average on on twitch and i said shit <laughs> you know like <laughs> I, I i have to do something um and and that was that was the kick in the arse that i needed that 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 got me going right and that yeah. made me sit there and say okay what am I? What do I need to do to to make my channel better, right? What and, and it it forced me to start thinking about improving and looking around. And ever since then, I haven't stopped. When I look at somebody else's stream, I try to pick up on things that mm. uh, that they're doing that's right. Um, and I don't care who I'll watch. I'll watch small streamers. I'll watch big streamers. I'll watch people from outside of World of Warships. Um, you know, like. I actually had somebody message me, Zath, what are you doing watching a hot tub stream? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm watching a hot tub stream because I want to see what's working for them. And no, I'm not going to walk around in a bikini, but like, oh, there's other... I thought I was going to have a scoop there, Zath. <laughs> I was going to have a scoop and I'd be like, yes, and people I, I mean, next week. <laughs> I, I mean, on, on King of the Sea, I did show off my leg to, uh, to, um, to see Raptor. I got a great, uh, clip of that he's like oh so um uh, but anyway um you know like there's, there's other things that they're doing off camera or or while things are going on that like made me realize okay i need to do something in between to, to make sure people understand you know hey I'm, I'm taking a break for a couple minutes but this is you know like we'll be back and so like there, there's all those little things that you pick up on and it, it's just it could be something as, as small as like just just a, a word of text right or it could be as as large as a whole different scene or a whole different mm -hmm. uh view of you and stuff like that um you know uh, another person that that i watched is uh siren uh she's a german streamer uh and she does she does some uh, like in between games where where there's a different scene where she's a little bit larger and there's stuff going on, on the side and i'm thinking god i'd love to do that but that's work <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. to, to put into it um but you know, I, I'm having fun trying to trying to grow a, and improve and really make the, the stream something special that, uh, you know, people enjoy and, and innovate. But that again, that all came from, oh, my God, I'm going to lose this thing that I really, really, really want. <laughs> yeah. From the so. numbers, et cetera. Um, uh, do, you, do you worry about the future of the game that they might put something? I said exactly the same thing to uh first admiral um was mm. that if they do you worry that they're gonna put something in the game where you just go you know what that that's me out of it I, and you worry that the stream will go with that because you're gonna have to change i appreciate there's a lot of quite negative talk in the cc community i mean the world of Warships community about the cvs the subs the other bits and bobs that are going on do you do you what do you always have that as a little worry that something will change you go you know what or are you established enough now to say, yeah, if that does happen, then I can go to Homeworld. I can still do YouTube. I can do something else. Um, well, the first thing, let me ask you, Pete, do you play World of Tanks? Not anymore. No. Not anymore. Okay. No, I used what to. Got you to what got you to stop playing, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I got me stopped playing because I couldn't progress. Um, I was playing World of Tanks before World of Warships came along and I got to a skill level where 
you know, I was in tanks, which I just could not do damage or do anything to others. And, you know, doing all the things I thought I was doing well, you know, but, and so I swapped to World of Warships. And to be honest, Warships is more my thing anyway, rather than necessarily tanks. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why sure. I changed. That's why I changed. And I find, okay. and also the money available, the money you had to put in to World of Tanks at the time. I mean, gold ammo you had to pay for, for example, and then people would still be throwing tons of it at you. And I can't afford that. You know, I'm, you know, it's like having a, you know, um, like Harry Kane playing for your the 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 the, the your local um, football team. You know, it's just it's, it's just not fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, so in your time playing World of Tanks, how many times did you see people say this is going to kill the game? Uh, I quite a few times, to be honest, particularly with artillery. Um, you know. Yeah. Yep, definitely. So, and the reason I'm bringing that up is because people say the same thing about World of Warships, right? The CV rework is killing the game. I'm sick of I'm sick of the game because of how CVs are played, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the com- the commander rework. I I know a lot of people that stopped playing after the commander rework, and um, we we did a, a Zath chat all about that, and it was really interesting to watch people. You know, people have played this game for years, four, five, six years, that know how the how the game works, right? And all of a sudden, a lot of those parameters have changed, and they don't want to change with them. It was, it's very interesting to, to see that happening. Um, and then, of course, the, the subs coming now, right? That's going to ruin the game, too. Um, I don't necessarily know that any of that's going to wreck the game. Uh, there, there's a lot of talk about Wargaming trying to monetize the crap out of players more. You talked about that with your with your gold ammo. Thank God there's no gold ammo in World of Warships, right? But, like... Yeah just about everything else is like highly monetized, right? The, the, the line releases that are coming out now and um, all these extra new premium ships that are coming out that are mostly tier eight, nine, and 10, which are of course rather expensive compared to four, five, and six. So like, um, do I see the game going away anytime soon? No. Do I see players going away anytime soon? Absolutely. Um, players that simply don't want to change people play players that maybe are not happy with mm-hmm. with their you know when and i'm not faulting them by the way when i pick up a video game when i pick up pto2 and i start playing it on youtube i expect it to play the way that i remembered playing it when i was in high school and it does because it's not a constantly evolving and changing game right there's mm-hmm. koei didn't release a patch in 2008 to completely redefine how pto plays so as a result, I can pick it up, I can play it, I can have fun again. But World of Warships is a game that is ever-evolving. Every patch, it evolves into something different. And a patch is every month now, essentially. So, well, four weeks even. So, you mm. know, it, it's it's changed. It, it changes right before us every time. Even if it's a small change, it, it becomes a big change over time. And I think that that's great. In the fact that the, the game is always new, it's always fresh, there's always something to check out, but it also sucks because, hey, that thing that I liked to do before, I can no longer do, right? Or I can't do it to the extent that I used to be able to do it. So, I, I don't, I don't like I said, I don't see a lot of people, uh, I see some people leaving, I don't see like entire swaths of players getting out. But keep in mind that this is also new and fresh to a whole bunch of other players as well. And there are plenty mm. of new people that, that keep coming in and joining the game and checking it out. Certainly. So, I mean, certainly you see on the forums like the uh, on Facebook and places that say, I want subs to come in because that, that's the class I would love to play. I'd love to be hunting down right. a battleship in, um, hunting down the, the war spite or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I think you're right. I think it's a bit of a blend, isn't it? And, because it's constantly changing, you think that always gives you something to talk about, so you can always produce content for it. Right, absolutely. And since my theater is based on replay analysis, I mean that that scales really well to anybody, right? Mm. I I can I can have a Unicum, and I have plenty send me you know their replays, and we'll look at it. We'll talk about what they did right, what they did wrong. Because guys, the Unicums do screw up. <laughs> I screw up too, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but. Um, you know what what's great too is I'll, I'll get new players like people go on the forums this game's too difficult or you know i don't i don't get this or I'm, it's just frustration and you can tell they're frustrated right and they're coming to the forums mm. help me right 
And and there'll be people that'll say, send a replay to me. And I've had people say, hey, somebody said it on the forums to to check you out. So here's a replay and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And feel free to tell me I suck. And it's like, okay, let's, let's, <laughs> let's go into this and let's take a look at it. And just like your archery coach, you, you can't, you can't start with your advanced topics, right? You no. know, how you grip the bow is, is not necessarily where you, you're probably going to start with somebody, right? You're probably going to start with the basics of, of your overall stance, perhaps. And like, you know, the idea that you pull back and then fire, like how to hold the arrow perhaps and stuff, but like, you don't go into all those little no, nuances. Of, no. of, and that's the exact same way with how I do my replays. So, you know, if I get somebody that I know is a newer player, well, then, okay, I'll, I'll you know, adjust my feedback accordingly. Um, mm. And even if I don't know beforehand that they're a new player, within the first few minutes, I can tell if they're a new, you know, if they're yeah. a newer player or they're very experienced. So um, I don't see that part of my theater going away. As long as the servers are lit and going, I'm going too, right? Mm. Um, and that that's not a problem. Um, I do have other things that I could be streaming. Absolutely. Uh, do I want to? Yes, I'd love to stream other games. I'd love to stream things that are passions of mine. But when I only have that six hour time period uh, a, a, a week, I, I just simply don't have uh, the time. Ability. Right. Um, and actually one of the, the components that you mentioned it that I've been doing. So I took that six hour stream and I've actually divided it up into three different components now. So the first component of my stream is literally me getting my dailies. And that could be me playing ranked because a lot of people want to see me play too. So yeah. I'll play I'll play ranked and I'll explain, I'll talk through like what I'm doing and why. Um, and then, or we'll do uh, operations and people can come in and join me and we'll play tier six, tier seven operations up to seven players. And that's a lot of fun, right? Because I'm playing with, with my community. Um, and from there, we launch into the Zath chat where we literally talk about what's going on in the game. Uh, you know, if there's a hot button issue that 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 people want my take on, I will give them my take. Uh, of course, I am under NDA, so I can't talk about the performance of a test ship or something along those lines, right? Yeah. Um, but I I can gladly talk about things that go around it. So, for example, you've probably seen it. Most of your viewers have probably seen it. Uh, some some sort of video of a golden lion almost completely deleting in Alaska right with its uh airstrike or whatever and people say zath what, what are your thoughts on that and i'm like i can't give them to you because my thoughts are under nda but what i can tell you is that if wargaming looks at the data and the data says that the, the this is too powerful of a uh of a, of a consumable or whatever um gimmick um then it's gonna have to be dialed back and you know they'll they'll make their palette passes this is the first iteration of this ship being out on on the live test server so wait be patient don't mm. sit still if you're you know if you're playing in alaska or you know any other battleship like after seeing that video what can you the player do to react to it like and that's something that i think going way back when people were upset when the stalingrad was coming in and i said okay well let's and i can't talk about her performance characteristics but i can talk about what what she does what, what her what her weaknesses are Right. How can you exploit those weaknesses and, and mm. how do you respect the ship on the battlefield? What do you need to do? So we talked about angling armor. We talked about positioning with islands so that the Stalingrad doesn't get a shot on you. You know, we talked about trying to get on the side so you can you can blap the Stalingrad because it's it's weakest if you can get a broadside hit. Right. Mm -hmm. So like we, we don't need to necessarily talk about the performance of a ship. We can talk about how how do you react to it? What what all the kinds of things do you do around that? And so um the the chats are are there for that purpose, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, anybody is welcome to come into my Discord and talk through, as long as we are all being respectful and courteous to each other. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and it's it's been interesting because I'm talking about hot button issues like the CV rework, right? And that that's something that that people you look on the forums and they scream about it, right? You look on Reddit, they scream about it, right? But like here. You can't scream. <laughs> if you scream, yeah. I'm gonna mute you. You know what I mean? Like, like, um, and we haven't gotten to that point. Boy, I thought we were. I thought we were this close, but you know, we, we haven't gotten to that point where I've had to kick somebody or or say I'm sorry, but I have to mute you. Or you know, I want everybody's voice to be to be a part of our talk, and that's yeah. important, right? Because I've got players who are average players. I've got players that are below average players. I've got people that are unicums coming in and talking about their experience, right? And 
what was interesting about that is I think some of some of the players that were Unicom start realizing not everybody understands the game the same way they do. No. And no. that's that's so cool. Right? To to be able to talk about that and make people realize that. And I think it helps people understand, you know, when when they're in chat and they see somebody do something stupid, you know, you you don't just go in and say, you know, new uninstall game, you know, like you, you don't start, you know, doing that kind of stuff once you realize who's behind the keyboard. Hmm. And that's what's so cool. Uh, I must say, I think that is so easy to rage online because you've got that oh, barrier, yeah. it literally got that barrier. So you can just go and then walk away. But when you're in a conversation, you naturally can't do that, you, even if it's just a video conversation or a conversation like this. And I think that right. that really helps. So that was the first two parts of your stream. And what's the third part of your stream then? Is that the Zath replays? The Zath replay yes. theater? Yeah. Yes. So usually the last two hours, three hours or so, we try to get into as many replays as we can. Um, I have a system where if people send me replays. I'll put them. I'll put them in in order in in which I think people might want to see. So like right now, ranked battles is on. So I try to prioritize tier six and seven replays. Now we're moving into silver league. So of course, you know, six through nine replays is what I'm you know mm. going to be prioritizing. I guess. I try to prioritize ships that like you don't see that much anymore. So like if somebody sends in a, a Nagato game, for example, okay, we'll take a look at Nagato because people, people, most people aren't aren't grinding that line anymore, right? Some are, but most people are done with it. Um, yeah. So I try to I try to go about uh, doing it that way. Um, I also have it set so that if people are watching for long enough, uh, they accrue channel points and then they can cash in those channel points for what's called cover my replay. So they they can cash that in. They can tell me that they want me my replay covered, and okay. So just tell me the ship and tell me the the map, and then I'll I'll put that to the top of the line. I'll bump it up, right? Yeah. Um, if people subscribe to the channel, that's covered. If people are a tier one uh, Patreon on my only replays, that's covered too. So like, you know, the the whole idea is I want people to uh, be able to get their replays featured. Uh, but not feel like they have to spend money to do it, um, you know, whatever. But by the end of a patch cycle, man, I get the the last patch cycle. Unfortunately, King of the Sea, I couldn't cover anything because of you know King of the Sea. Um, but I had about a hundred and thirty replays submitted to me. Now, wow. in the course of a of a three hour stream, I might be able to get through ten. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so like. You, you can understand, like, most people's replays, unfortunately, towards the end of a patch cycle won't be covered. But if people send me replays at the beginning of a patch cycle, there's a really good chance that, that it'll make it on the list and, and boom, you know, off boom we go. There. So. Brilliant. Yep. Okay, I've, then. So I think we've probably hit our end of our time here now. But um, is there anything I've missed or you would like to say at all? The floor is yours. Oh, God. Um, oh, that's, that's, that's scary. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, you know, I obviously I, I do this because it's a passion of mine. Um, like I said, it started off a, as a way of earning that CC badge. Um, but over time, it's it's grown into something where I truly do care about uh, the community. I really do care about the game. I really do care about helping people improve and, and getting better. Um, and it's it's transformed into something that I never thought would exist you know i'm a twitch partner now because of because of the drive to be a cc essentially mm. right and and because of maintaining and growing and all that kind of stuff now i've got that uh to put on part of the youtube partner program same oh, wow. deal right yeah I, that that happened just a month and a half ago a month ago something like that it's like wow right you know and um i've got a discord now that's got 542 members like Wow, you know what I mean? Like I, I never thought that I'd be at this point. I just wanted to play the damn game, you know, and get free things. And now look at where I'm at, right? Like it is so cool what I've been able to do thanks to to World of Warships and and to War Gaming. And I mean, I, th there's a debt there, right? Like that mm. that I don't know if I can ever be uh, completely replayed, a uh, repaid, <laughs> replayed. But um, you know, the the thing is, is that like. I, you know, I, I enjoy the game so much. I enjoy uh, the people so much that when, when we talk about stuff, you know, like I'll be negative about things sometimes, right? I'll say this, this is terrible idea. Like the most recent thing I was negative about was the, um, 
what was when they announced the, the team damage and i said wait a minute so you're gonna you're gonna reduce remove team damage but then if if certain number of of team damage it gets done or something you're gonna kill everybody's xp and credits or, or that person's xp and credits like why are they still going to play at that point? Then they're just going to hit escape and go back to. And now you've got you know eleven people on your team instead of twelve. How is that fair to the other eleven? And like you know, like I don't have a problem saying that kind of stuff. But um, you know, ultimately, I'm going to keep coming back to the game because it's something that I I love and I enjoy doing. Mm. But um, you know, I'm I'm not above reproach and the, I guess the one thing to, that I'd love to say is that if if anybody ever has any feedback for me either positive or negative especially negative I'd like to know I'd like to know what I'm doing right I'd like to know what I'm doing wrong because that's the only way that I can Im improve my stream and my YouTube and my presence on the forums and in game like you know I'm just somebody else and um you know who's who's playing uh, you guys get to meet me because I'm a CC and now you know who's behind the keyboard but um, you know, if you ever get a chance, guys, go to a wargaming event, something that they host uh, in North America. That's the let's uh, not let's battle tour anymore. Jeez, that's anchors away now um, over in the UK and uh, on the continent. I believe there are various UK of, uh, or sorry, various wargaming events, right? Um, I thought no, not for World of Tanks. They are famous to go to Bovington. They do a lot of that over there. But for World of Warships, they have done a couple and I believe that, th and uh, they recently did that last one where they did um, like live stream for 17 hours across the world of all the different. That was, cool. um, that was excellent. I mean, some things Wargaming really do nail, and that is definitely one of them. Because frankly, until these games came along, those those museums were on their knees at the best of times, and it's expensive to run these old warships mm. in particular. They're big, uh, big, big things. Um, so. Um, I don't know if there's anything planned. I assume they're thinking of doing something, but I don't know of anything specific as yet. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, thanks to you know COVID, I know that COVID they're, they're is had a, yeah, it's hit quite but, hard. Right, right. But hopefully someday soon that'll be behind us, and we can start you know having player gatherings again. And guys, if you get a chance to go to one of these, uh, do it. it. It gives you a chance to meet people uh, that are other players like yourself. It gives you a chance to meet uh, some CCs, perhaps. It also gets you a chance to meet the more gaming uh, people as well. And um, it's just, I mean, the, the first time I went to one of these, man, and I, I see uh, uh, somebody who's 60 years old who loves playing the game, who's playing with, with his grandson side by side on, a, on two computers that, that have been put out. Like, damn, that's cool. But it also makes you think, okay, so the person... The person that that just did that thing in my random battle could very well be that sixty year old, right? Mm. It could be that twelve year old. It could be someone that's in their late forties. It could be somebody in college. Like there, there are so many different variables. Uh, what brings everybody together is is their passion for this game. So, it's very important to me to to remember that when it comes to playing. And uh, I hope that you know all of you out there who are listening to this remember that as well. When you're playing, when you get frustrated with uh, somebody, whether that be on your team or on the opposite side, um, you know, you're talking to another human being. Yeah, definitely. And on that note, I will say goodbye. So thank you very much, Lord Seth. All the links in the description um, of all the Discord and all the various locations where we can find you will be in the description down below. And I will bid you goodbye. So goodbye. All right. <laughs> See you, you later. Soon. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, thank you all for watching. If you like this sort of content, please like and subscribe to the channel. Appearing now will be links to some more recent videos. And once again, thank you all for watching. And don't forget to hit that bell. Until next time, see you later. Ciao.